What is up guys, Kaidom here, and this is a quick video showing some of the new updates. So in the next few days, I'll be working on a new playlist. Uh, this time we'll be uh, making short videos explaining each feature. So in, like instead of the usual long video that is kind of hard to um, like come back to and check out like a specific part, uh, with the short videos, you'll be able to come back and check out like a specific feature such as how to add a new pickup or how to make a, a mag, uh, etc. Uh, along that, of course, I will also be uh, providing a written guide for that specific feature. And if you need help or further explanation about a certain thing um, about the system or about UE4 in general, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Um, so in this update, we have a couple um, things to talk about. Uh, first is armor and durability. So uh, items now can have durability and durability can be used for, for example, armor. So a helmet can have like 25, 25. It can, for example, take like a, uh, a bullet or two before, uh, before the bullet, of course, goes through uh, the helmet. Uh, same, of course, for armor. Um, so the durability can be set inside the data table. And if you don't need an item to have durability, you can just simply set the max and min to zero, zero, and that item will not have durability, meaning that it will not be displayed on the item. Um, so durability here in this example, we have like a function inside the character that um, mitigates damage based on the armor, based on where you got hit, head, body. And of course, if you have a helmet, it's going to mitigate the head damage, etc. Same thing works for AI. So AI also has armor. And if you uh, shoot like an uh, AI through uh, the armor, it will of course reduce that armor. And if you loot the AI, you'll be able to see the damage dealt to the armor. Of course, if you loot that armor, it will keep its durability. Uh, same thing for character. Um, if you get shot from another player or from the AI or from any source of damage, you can update durability. Um, of your character of course i'll uh, we'll see the function later of course you can use that function to do your custom behavior so let's take a look at this ai so we'll pick up this uh weapon that i added here we'll install that new uh, site there so this ai both of them have armor okay so we're going to try to shoot one uh, ai through the armor and the other guy through the head to see how that works so for example this guy has armor so three shots and if you see here, normally he would die in two shots, um, but uh, in this case, uh, his arm mit uh, mitigated a little bit of damage from two bullets. And of course, he has zero durability there. Uh, of course, you can customize your damage however you want. Uh, but in this case, the uh, armor is destroyed pretty much. Um, if we go to this AI, for example, and, and shoot him through the head, you're going to see here that his armor is 80 out of 80, uh, which of course the uh, armor didn't take damage of course we can take it here and of course have the armor there so if you go to the data table here for example to weapons and if we go to rifle here uh, you're gonna see that we have a durability somewhere here so we have mat uh, durability and max durability so uh, here the weapon is 100 out of 100 i guess we should have looked at the armor instead so if you go to the armor here, uh, armor, for example, you can see here that it is 80 out of 80. And of course you can set the durability or max durability and that will uh, act as a durability. So durability can be used for multiple things. Um, in this case, if we go to the character here and find the event any damage, uh, we have this calculate damage. Um, and by the way, let's, well, let me open the function so this function right here um based on the damage type here um let me actually find here so i added a couple damage types so we have for example the uh, damage type body head limb neck other of course you can add other uh, types here so based on the bone that the bullet or the trace hit we can of course apply a certain damage for example to the head you take twice as much damage for example uh, or the body, but in this case, we're just trying to figure out where the bullet hit the player or the AI. And based on that, we will either update the helmet armor, if we have armor, or um, a body armor. So in this case, we have calculate damage, we have the damage type, 
and we're simply checking the class of that damage. Uh, so I go to the firearm here real quick. Um, so damage here. So get damage type by bone hit. So based on the bone here, um, we can re uh, we can return a specific class based on, of course, the bone that got hit. And in the character here, of course, based on that type, uh, damage type here, we simply, if it's a head, for example, uh, we, uh, of course, here in this case, we do like, since it's a head, we do damage multiplied by two, that, that would be the new damage. Then this function right here checks for um, if you have a helmet, for example, equipped. Um, so here in the character, we have the, uh, whenever you equip something, a, the interface function is uh, triggered. For example, if you go to the MP component interface, we have these interfaces uh, functions here. So when you consume an item, this function will trigger. When you pick up an item, when you, uh, uh, when you equip an item or unequip an item, etc. So in this case, we have check MP on main. So main means your main equipment. So for example, primary, secondary, pistol slot, etc. So in this case, uh, in this guy right here, jig MP on main container item added. That means something got equipped to your character. So in this case, we have this dictionary right here that you need to modify based on what you have. So in this case, by default, since we have here inside the multiplayer, we have these um, items to craft, container settings, we have our container or inventory slots. So head, upper, etc. So you need to enter these values right here. So based on a, uh, the uh, container name or slot name, we have a equipment or player slot. So uh, head will be head, headwear, upper, upper, etc. So when you equip an item, we set the equipped info here. So uh, later we can use it to know if we have like a helmet equipped or if we have armor, etc. Uh, so same thing when uh, removed. So when an item is inequipped, we update this, uh, we clear the info so we know that we don't have a helm. So we use this info right here in the calculate damage. So we have this function right here, this is inside the character. So we get the headwear, which would be, for example, the helmet. So we say, okay, do we have a helmet? If we do, then what we do here, we simply get the durability. And based on that durability, we can mitigate a damage. So feel free to check this uh, function right here to um, at least get what is equipped and from there you, you have durability and you can do whatever you want. Um, all you need to do here is you can get the uh, equipped item and you need to, uh, you have this function right here that can update a, the durability based on a unique ID that we get from here. So when you, when you equip something, we save its unique ID. Uh, so we can find that unique ID using the same slot. In this case, the slot is saved here, armor or head. And you get that unique ID and you call this function right here from the jig multiplayer. Uh, so we just simply tell it, hey, update the durability. And uh, it updates the durability and we save, update the info that we have in our character. So same thing here for the AI, we have a calculate damage that does pretty much the same thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for durability. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. So next we have a reward weight system. Um, so in this case, as you can see here, it says uh, like the this container right here, it will tell you how uh, the weight of this entire container works for items as well. So if you hover there, it says 120. That was by default, obviously. But if you inspect, it will tell you here. If you inspect a weapon, it will tell you the entire weight of the um, weapon, uh, including its attachments. And if you go, for example, loot a container, you could also see that as well. So for example, this is gonna tell you that there are 2.24 kilograms. So now you can access the weight of like an entire container or entire item. So you have two ways here. When you have a, a GSI reference or like an item, you can do get item weight. This will tell you the item weight, including its attachments. If you want the weight of a certain item without its attachment, you can do get default weight this will give you the weight of this item without its content if you um if you want to know the weight of a container you can also do get container weight like so so this is client side of course and server side you can do so in this case server side you can do get uh, total inventory weight or get inventory weight by main container name so you can say for example um like my backpack for example 
you can get the weight of your backpack like this this is server side so next we have a new uh setting for capturing items so as you can see here um this rifle right here is actually using the same render target texture that this weapon is using currently so if i go ahead in here and maybe install a couple of attachments here um, so what you're going to notice here is that if I install any attachments on this weapon, it's going to also show in the action bar. So if I install this and this as well, you're going to see that it gets updated properly. And it also gets rotated and scaled um, properly as well. So there are two ways. You can either do this, meaning copy um, the render target and then adjust it or simply capture with uh, or like capture a new render target texture and with like different settings. Uh, so let's take a look at both. So normally if you go here to the capture um, data table, so it's gonna be in demo pickups and then data tables and then we have item inspector. So this is the data table that has uh, the location and rotation of of like when uh, or how a certain item should be captured for example if i click on the modular rifle you can see that here we have the location we have rotation and fov and also we have an action bar sitting so you can either use this meaning that like i said you will use a new texture with different settings because like so because the action bar is like usually a one by one ratio as opposed to like your primary uh, slot of course, you're going to need different settings. Or you can simply not use this and, and simply use the method that I just uh, described. So if you go to your uh, character here, begin play. So as you can see here, what we do is we simply, when an item is equipped, such as your rifle, uh, we simply, um, so we have a setting first. So let me see here. Go to the end game widget. And if you select, for example, this action bar, we have a new setting called... So here we have a new uh, setting called allow capturing item image. So this basically means don't capture a, uh, an image for this item. Um, so because here we're gonna be copying the texture from the uh, main slots. So we don't need to capture it here. Um, so we set this to false and then here uh, we simply, uh, when we uh, like add equip an item, so basically we just copy whatever is equipped we equip a new item to the action bar and we simply say adapt image to action bar. So this function right here is called on a uh, item ref and we use the same render target snapshot of the main container. This is usually your uh, primary slot. So, um, so we simply uh, copy or get the same reference. We set the same thing and we simply adapt it. So there's also a new setting called adjust image or something like that so what it does here is like i said it's similar to the action bar copying uh image but this time it's actually it, it just adjusts its own image so here as you can see this is normally a two by one so it's not going to look great on a one by one unless if we um capture a new image that is one by one so what it does here it simply adjusts the image um based on uh, the item dimensions and where it's equipped uh, so in this case it's equipped by one by one so it adjusts the size and then rotates the item a little bit there to make it look better um, so this is also a new if i go here so if we open this here and select all these containers we have a new setting called um, on image capture try adjust scale when equipped so this one will try to adjust the image captured if like the item is uh, is different from the container that is equipped to. And also we have a new uh, debug uh, feature here. So uh, we use a data table to like enter the snapshot of an item, like the location rotation that should be used to take a snapshot of a certain item and also to inspect. Uh, if you wanna figure out what, are, what those values are, you can use the uh, debug here. Uh, now we have like the item here so we can figure out um, how it's going to look inside a, an inventory. Uh, so as soon as you start, for example, doing like 22, it's going to co copy your current um, settings here. It's going to adjust. So you can like try to find a value that works for both inspecting the item 
and also inside the inventory. Uh, but of course, you these can can be saved, obviously. Um, so what you need to do here is remember these values or note them somewhere, and then go to the uh, like the snap uh, data table here or inspector dt item inspector, and then enter these values right here. Um, so this is where you need to enter those values to get a proper um, image. So one more thing about the AI here. So we have a new uh, function called update ammo or update AI ammo in gun. So this function can be used for, for example, if you have an AI that is shooting and you want to keep track of the ammo used by the AI. Um, this allows you to do that. So for example, I can when the AI dies here. So once the AI die here, I can say, for example, okay, uh, the AI shot like maybe 29 bullets. Now it has one left in the mag. So if I go here and simply uh, kill like one of these AIs, you're gonna see that it has uh, one bullet there, as you can see, out of 30. So what you wanna do here is just keep track of how many bullets the AI used and simply call this function when the AI is dead. And finally here, we have this uh, bottle, uh, as you can see here, it says 150 out of 50, uh, 150 out of 150. So if we right click here, do use, as you can see, you can use a specific amount. For example, I want to drink like 53 and it's going to update the um, capacity there. And of course, when you consume something, uh, like I said earlier, there is an interface event inside the character that gets triggered and tell you what's uh, what happened. So pay attention to the print there. It's, it says consume water and of course the amount there. So based on that amount, of course, you can do whatever you want. You can like maybe add more stamina, etc. Uh, so capacity container has been a feature for a long time. Uh, so right now we just simply added the use here and the how much you want to use. And so for that, once again, capacity containers will be uh, covering everything in the new series that we're going to be working with. So if you go to the consumables data table here, we have water as an item. Um, here and we simply we have a water bottle that supports that water for example so um, this is uh, usually to make a capacity container what you want to do here is you want to set the max stack to something like 150 but make sure that can stack is false so because this is a bottle it cannot stack so what we can do here is we can repurpose this max uh, stack and just consider it as a max capacity instead so in this case we have 150 and then we go here and we make sure that it is a container and the dimensions here is one by one because it's going to hold one item which is water and that's all we need and then container supported items is going to be consumables and then the container only support ids that would be water so this just makes sure that you don't like you can't um, put anything inside this container other than water and that's pretty much it um, you can right click and do consume so if you go to the context here the context right here you can do selected on menu uh selected here so so if we use the item we check if it's a capacity container so once again a capacity container is something like a mag a bottle so it, ha it is a container of something but it's but it has a limit like it can't exceed a certain capacity and so we're simply called the set up consume request and here we just show the widget and based on that we call the request consume item and this one is usually the function that you want to use or the event that, we, that you want to use to consume any kind of item so yeah that's pretty much it uh if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and uh once again the uh, new series is going to hopefully help you understand everything that is uh, that is to understand about the system once that playlist is done, I'll be then working um, with a new playlist to cover um, the uh, JSI container and JSI slot. So meaning that we will not be working with the multiplayer components. We'll actually be working from scratch using the widgets only. So we'll be handling everything. We'll show you how to handle multiplayer as well. So if you just have just a little bit of uh, blueprint knowledge, you should be able to pretty much make any any inventory system you want with those two widgets so until then thank you for watching stay safe see you later goodbye